Farscape 2001 Eat Me. The episode opens one of Moya's transport pods moving through black space, clearly in trouble and yawning so badly to the right. It seems to be flying on its side. Cut to its interior where John is at the flight controls. Expression of intense concentration as he pilots the damaged vehicle while Chiena opens an access panel and tries to affect your players. Diego and Jewel wait tensely while Diego does. Jewel waits impatiently. John, this pod is falling apart. I can, all I can do is keep her afloat, Chiena. Chiena will barely contain fury. Not my fault, Crichton. I looked away for Micro. And Jewel grabbed the controls. John, I didn't say it was your fault. Give me give me status. Shenna. Fluid pours like blood from the broken ends of pod indents. She quickly pulls lines in an urgent attempt to reroute damaged connections. It's not holding. Jill we discussed it we discussed it. Shenna. Think the bleeding cables aside. Oh, you're getting mink everywhere. Shenna, shut the fell. This is your fault. But at that moment, Salvation as the dress pod comes up on a dark asteroid with three tails of the phone and I've seen sweeping out from behind it. Jaw points triumphantly. Jaw, look, there's Moya. It's just John cuts her off abruptly by heading what appears to be home. John, pilot, Aaron, come in, pilot. As they come around the side of the asteroid and take, get a better look, they find him. Diego sees it first. Diego in a low tone. That's not Moya. Indeed, it's not. A light from a distant misty star hits a Lucifer. His skin is seen as the disease of yellowed. It's mostly dark and looks dead. But most ominously, it's great interior. Fetchin is encircled by a massive black structure. At the finding, it's a finding with a control collar. That means peacekeepers. But the pod is failing fast. They need help now. John calling readouts, O2's levels falling. Shannon's voice quivers anxiously. Terminary, comms, neutral status, we've got nothing. Pod lurch, lurches, begins to shudder heavily. John, all right. We're, we're heading for that ship, that's it. There you go, John. That is not an option. John, calm, calm but grim. You don't have many options unless you want to die out here in the middle of nowhere. There you go, it's better than me. With me. Being captured, tortured, and killed by peacekeepers. He speaks to send the power cells falling and escaping that field is her, are heard. Jewel panicking. Do you hear that noise? That's our air. They were agitated. You know us, Jewel. Continues arguing with John as Shanna attempts to compensate for the fuel system's fuel failure. We have no comms, we have no idea of what is that on that ship. Leading us to our death. John makes no response after. Other than to cast Diego a look of grim resignation, the aims of pod towards his slayed Lothian, which hangs in space, bathed in a sticky light from the white star. Lion in the docking bay doors are wide open, but entries anything but smooth. John guides the damaged pod down a long, dark launch tunnel to the hangar bay. Bart's line pod's engines strain as they make an emergency landing, keeping the walls on the way in, uncorrupted by Jaws girly grit. Yelps of terror. Upon finally making it rough the touchdown, the damaged pod begins to fill with smoke and fire breaks out and some of its salts wink short in the short and wink roaring. John, all right, what's that? That's it, everybody out. Dago just stares stonily at him. John meets his stare and peeks out, a low growl of resentment, the Vlaxian moves. Moments later Diego descends the pod steps from Siena. A jewel in tow. He and Shiena are armed and have their flashlights attached to their weapons. The hangar bay is dark and the air is misty with smoke. Not smoke with it from their broken down transport pod though. Open fires and containers like that, like what a bum might set in a trash can. In a trash can to keep him warm in the cold weather. Flicker here and there and first supplement. The dim emergency lights hang high. Nephew and ceiling. Great twists of shredded crable dangle like dark jungle vines. The floor is littered with debris, 
Odd lights winky and near on bits that supposed to have a discontinent this coordinate random sounds echo in the dark, signaling his life aboard the disease ship. The same way that strange round sounds van in mansion hit the presence of the dead. Shanna, she and Shago stopped at the foot of the pod steps and take in a desolate scene. Up and here, a distant sound like an animal coughing is heard. A smell is slowly advanced as they wait the expected arrival. Some sort of meet greeting committee. There's no movement except the little flames dancing in the containers. If there were peacekeepers, they'd be here by now. They go, well, this section's there lot, so someone wants us here. Hails deeply in the ship, deeply of the ship's rank older. And it's a long moment of silence as they take in, in not only the round ruin, the increasing evident feel for the place. So suddenly the silence broke by a veil. <coughs> Something launches itself toward, out of the shadows at Dago, lands on his back, his arms around his neck, biting and clawing him. Dago, Joel calls screams and Shanna yells. Shanna Dago made his display of faith in Nibia's gunmanship. Dago turns to face her, a yelling thing on his back, and lets her shoot it off him. Takes a few blasts of Shanna's pulse gun, then inches Dago's head, but the grip of the thing on his back is finally broken. Dago's able to throw it off dead. John, who stands back in the pod, the survey damage put out the fires, comes following down, flying down the pod steps at the commotion with gun in one hand, a snarl of a wire in the other. John, what the hell is going on out here? Panny Dago pushes the thing that attacked him on it, onto his back. It's a serene looking man. He is like a phony. He appears diseased and uncapped. In addition to his caveman hair, his skin full of lesions, he's, and his dead gaping teeth. He reveals gums studded with rotting or missing teeth. John catches sight of the dead creature. Diego glares at him. Diego cruises in the tree. I told you we shouldn't come here. Cut back to soon after. Our crew is still with their non functional transport pod, but they have given up waiting for any kind of welcoming party. Shannon stands sent for entry. The gloom of the Diego and Jewel watch John is examining his spit circling wire. She can move from the pod. Diego duly offering, duly, darling offering his assessment of the pod's conditions gone. John Confani lets his insight as he, let, he lets drop a tangled wire he is inspecting. Burnt, battered, busted. Ding dong, the pod is dead. Draw tense. It can't be dead, Trivon. You have to fix it. You have to get it out, out of here. John ain't gonna happen. Nice we could place that stuff. There you go, we need three K wire and uranium coils. John Wright, we'll find it we might stand the chance. It means discovery to hunt. Stands lots towards the interior, stranger findings a distant moan, where some unknown source echoes of creeped light silence. In that direction, Jill, you can't be can't, well, can't we just borrow one of their transport pods? Jenna creeped out by the place. There isn't any. I looked around. I already looked. No transport pods, not a single piece of escape craft. It's like it's not anybody who could leave had left. Dago softly as the distant noises continue. His place is bad voodoo. John resolutely refuses to give in to the eeriness of the place, picks up his gun and starts off with Safani and Night Warrior. So pair parts this way. Joel with a little grasp of dread as Shane and Dago make to follow John. I'm getting back in the transport pod and staying there. China, thank frick. John, nay, you stay with her, China. China, no way, John. Pip, transport, all we got. China, in a fierce whisper, I'm warning you, going to end up killing that red-headed talk, Drank. John, step of head to leave. Whatever, whatever, go on. He turns back towards the tyranny to find him. Share parts that way. Let's find him. China, Dago, and John set off. He stalks back to Jules, waiting at the pot of pod steps of Mutter's frail. Cody Dagg and John as they move through the maintenance bay, towards the inner doors to the rest of the ship. They go and they make a visual inspection of what's left of Fonian. There's a sound of fluid dripping in the reeking darkness. John trashed. Dago grunting his disagreement. There's no free rock key wire and definitely no Norwegian coils. John calling anyone home? As if response, poisonous green and orange light 
begins to flicker in the clamshell viewer, but no image of a pilot's face revolves. There's no sound but fuzzy static. Anybody out there? There you go, throws his shoulders to get to the great oval door leading out of the maintenance bay and to the rest of the phonium. It won't budge. He looks back at John, who looks around at an expression, his face making it clear the haunted house atmosphere is getting to him. Dago, do you want to give me a hand here? With Jan. John, maybe that there's a pilot keeping it shut. And that the great door chunks and slightly begins to swivel open. Rona called our pit harrows, bring their weapons up and edge wearily through. A host of peacekeepers, or thousands of feral wimpy boys, friends and relatives. There's nothing beyond the door except an empty, decaying corridor. And there you go. Too late to worry about that. Let's just get out of, get what we need for the transport pod and get the thrill out of him. As they clear the great door, it begins to swivel shut behind him. So Dago, they rush back to the door, trying to wedge it open to no avail. Dago, China, China, the door is unwieldy. Find themselves cut off with Shannon and Jewel. Dago hits the comm. Shannon, no response. The comms are down. He turns back the door and bellows. Shannon! John, could it be the control collar? With sorry resignation, John, Dago turns back to him and hefts his quarter and flashlight into position again. All right, we know the layout, right? Okay, near home coils, two quay wire. Gotta be in tiers three and four. Neither that. Or he heads straight for pilot. Dago spots something ahead of them. Corridor that may moves towards it. Dago panting as if he's trying to keep himself from being sick, Crichton. John, what did you, what did you got, big guy? Dago shines in light with gleaming white skeletal remains of a hand, a forearm protruding from a heap of debris. Dago burns satarian bones, maybe. John quietly as he pulls Dago away, away. He move on through the Lafarnian. As they go t- to the terminal to read, the ship's physical deterioration becomes increasingly obvious. Fluid oozes from its sweating walls and the graceful bronze ribs that should force form the arches of its corridors are virtually gone, placed by putrid grey swellings of splodged with ugly grey red lesions. Corridors seem ready. The collapse and sound is muffled by expression of swollen flesh. A once beautiful ship, there you go and John, are more in hurry now and wary as they stride along the rotting tunnels. There you go this way. John, Abbott and Casello in the House of Horror. You know, we should talk of the po- to Pilot around the dripping corner. corner. We could tell, he could tell us where to find all the stuff we need. There you go, spotting what? He's, he's, look, he's looking for. Ah, uh, quite in. Moves his ass to the hatch of the service tunnel. And suddenly kicks it in. Releases his hiss of green vapour. And here John immediately goes in the duck inside. He quickly backs out with one hand over his mouth and smut nose. John, the wall. My man. Oh man, it smells worse than Rigel. Jago, well, almost. Get in. He pushes John into the service tunnel and follows inside the narrow diamond. Shaped matches is about as high as they are. It's even worse shaped than the main corridor. Ragged cables erupt from the walls, like veins and tendons from rotten flesh. They quickly find one item on the subject of the scavenger list. John, yep, the three K wire. Good call. You, how do you know? There you go, taking taking that guy, trying not to use his nose. So I'll guess this duck knees to the on filters. He had escaped out. What out? We have to scrap out, scrap out what we can. While he begins pulling the wires, a narrow tunnel of sweating, if any meat. John touches the fluid oozing the wells and sniffs it. John, oh my man, that hat, hat's puss. He rips away from the wall and tries to wipe his fingers off for a bit of metal. Wall rip. The ship is oozing pus, man. They go, yeah, the whole ship is diseased. Going, yeah, geez, no DRDs. What's that about? It's like she's got hit by some kind of biochemical weapon. She stands in the middle of the surface tunnel, gulping about, about the this revulsion as he just noticed all of this. Dago finishes collecting three key wire. That seems a healthy lack of interest in that what happened here. 
They don't know green calls to you. John, huh? huh? We gotta find the pilot. Diego's quite we need what we need and we'll get out. John, what we need is a guy who controls the maintenance bay doors. Hang as the whole damn ship in fact. Diego annoyed him, sensing another unwelcome adventure coming on. This is meant to be a hit and run mission, so we can get the parts up what that we need. John annoyed back and bringing up a good point, rationalized across at him. And what if we, we're dying? What if we've been exposed to some radiation or some virus that's going to mutate us the night of the living dead? They will then assume we get out of here. It's the better. Here's the better. If you want to go all the way to pilot's den, then you are tinked. John, hey, you know what? You know that. Hey, you know what? We don't know what we're dealing with here. Dago and Delianis, this is P. Cooper's prison ship. That's all we need to know, you know, to know. John looks away from him and makes a clear resolution, realization, a disgust of frustration and exceptions, clear lack of imagination, intellectual curiosity. John, as he walks away, I'm going to go find the pilot. Let get, you get some, get the junk. Nice job. Maybe when the others fly off the junk, you can fly off in your curiosity. Cut back to transport pod. Joy is standing several feet away when something lands on the floor near the foot with a little mechanic metallic jingle. Shannon is nearly looking nearby, just waiting for excuse to have a go at the wethead. Shanna, what was that? Joe oh, she looks up looks down at the thing lying next to her foot that Shannon marks his over and stoops it, scoops it up. Shannon, it's external joy sense that he broke it. Jill, I did not. I just fell. Just fell, Jenna. I don't believe this. She turns and walks, marches off towards the maintenance bay. Jill quickly frances after her. Jill frightened. What? Where are you going? Jenna, please, to join the treasure hunt. Jill, well, Crichton said to stay here. Jenna, well, he doesn't know what about this. Jill, well, you can't leave me. The comms are down. Jenna, without even looking at her. There's a pulse rifle and a transport pod. As they come to close the civil door, the Indian wrestlers live fun in and cheer her. Mutters herself a jewel bubbles on. Terrified. How can I open this door? You already know? We don't have the weapons. We don't have it. weapons on our planet. We don't have violence. We don't have war. She then turns on, turns to face her. Our word punches her in the jaw. Hard, in Tyrion. Squeals and staggers will fix in China with very stare. What the fell? Shiny only responds to deliver another right hook to your redhead's jaw. But this time, Jill comes back, a strong right of her own, the Nibian, Nibiai's jaw. Shanna takes it like a man, shaking her head, and adjusting a memorable hinge. A jaw surprising by herself, holds her wrist and squeals with greatest pain. Oh, thrilling him as me. Shanna, see? Violence. You get the hang of it. He turns back to the pondering of swivel door. Who stands there? Something deep inside the phonian. Someone manipulates a device. The device looks like a scourge protector. And inside plugins is lying with a series of round blue lights, a red bar, and several thick white hoses attached to it. Met- so sharp metal candelier, a needle as thick as a pencil. The owner of the device pushes the candelier into what appears to be part of the phonian. Electrical discharge drains the scene of this dim light with a couple with a couple brilliant white flashes and then a human looking hand touches the buttons on the device. Back in the maintenance bay, the great door swivels open before the two women. Shannon looks spooked as he mutters to Jewel, Good luck with the pulse rifle. I hope you're a fast learner. He moves slowly for the door which swings shut behind her, leaving Jewel but alone in the deep dark maintenance bay and pretty much von verbal with terror. Meanwhile, somewhere on the finding, the only device is seen is man, human like looking, and is standing in some place, dark place, a lit candle is hanging brown. They are fesh. He is middle aged, perhaps bald, and one of his eyes is pale, is staring as if it's blind. His luptra, limpurous limp, skin glistens on holes in his naked scalp, and exposed patches that appear to be metal. His fist has been filthy rags and tied and draped around his body, remnants of a rope cloak, a king's rope, though a device 
He used to open a maintenance bay at the door is attached to his right up forearm. He gazes severely into space with an previous previously set for expression in his face. His name is Kalalabok. Elsewhere, there he goes scaring with a hunt. Continues with a blast from his quilt troop, which breaks open the door of the storeroom. Enters breathing heavily. A quick look around reveals no no new coils. A useless gastro sensor. Suddenly, the identifiable different moans of the ghost ship are joined by a very familiar sound. Voices men shouting. And though they are not, they are saying what they are saying seems muffled, cannot be made out. Dago quickly leaves. John now reaches his destination, the pilot then. He steps in the huge chamber, a scene that greets him is one familiar and surreal, quite identical to his friend, Ragamoya, sits at the station. But beyond all that semblance of normality vanishes, Pilot station instead of being unswept, upswept, banker's ribs lined with light, is a blunted stump of degraded and firmly and fresh. Upon its human, several human like figures squat and leap out like little monkeys, making ape like like hooting sounds as they torment the great amber eyed pilot. The pilot look itself seems catonic. It slightly rocks back and forth. Shut jawed eyes unfocused, the hellish scene is lit by flashing red light from the light ships remaining life systems. As John steps further inside, the ape like creatures scurry away as he's at, at the sight of him. John, what the hell? As he approaches the pilot, he fixes beautiful eyes on him and grunts and screams incoherently with terror, becoming increasingly agitated. The closer John gets, Climbs up into the remains of the console, peers at the great creature, stares wildly back at him. Most of its arms have been hacked off, torso. The only mother god, the pilot cringes away from him, waving his remains to arm at him, in a frantic effort to keep him away. Easy, John backs a bit, off a bit. As soon as he makes any more move towards the Lephidium, pilot <coughs> begins thrashing madly and tries to fend him off. The sound of it makes it of an ballistic, as those the others board the ship, as if the lost the power of speech, I'm not gonna hurt you hurt you. John puts his gun away, sits back on the on his palms in front of the pilot, who sit sits lower head lowered, mouth wide and panting, and staring at him and saying at the top of his eyes, My name is Quentin, I live in a fine. We have a pilot. He's kinda like you, John's stillness and gentle voice, see the calm, trailing eyes creature. He slowly settles down. What happened to you? The pilot who's dying, the flaming named Rakuyu, looks up at him with his eyes wet with tears and with flies. Masculine voice is low and hoarse, wearily, weary beyond all knowing. Rakuyu, pilot, please kill me. Cut to Yana, sliding down a corridor. Festooned with stripes of decaying and flaming flesh, lit mainly by a flashlight. All around her, she can hear her lemmistic yells and shrieks. Fighter that she is, she prefers, she prefers threats to be out in open, where she can deal with them. She announces slowly, a gun at the ready. Come on, come out and play. A moment seen from the corner of her eye causes her to spin and fire a shadow behind her. Some of the howling stops and she rarely moves on. Maybe nearby, more nearby. Gribbering attracts her attention. She turns to find herself doorway dark room. Several human like figures are there, squatting around a small fire, grunting and nattering, intended to run the They scatter as she gates at them a moment before trying to back out slowly. Don't mind me, just talk to your bunk yourself. The skittish intemperance, Rokuru. Don't call, call a cow for long. A man makes a lunge for her. She easily knocks him back with a muzzle of the gun, a gun. Having got what she asked for, a clear look at the locals. She loses some of her other, but to you, a few more of them raise and stare at her. Hostile, feral eyes, one with a big hank of white refining or pilot meat. they has been gnawing on, and she noticed that he seems to have an identical twin the other side of the room. One attacks her again. She frints that easily throws him back, but she's very, but she's trying to serve these strange, insane looking people. And it screams as he tries to make an exit. Stay back, stay back. 
Cut back to John in where he was pilot's den. John, what about the your comms atmosphere? The doors could control any of that? The coup on it, rocking gently and shaking shaking his head as John speaks. He raises his claw as replies. He's trouble speaking. As if it's been a long time since he had anyone to talk to. I mean, your pod slashed. Please kill me. John, rather impatiently. Look, your arms are going to regenerate. Her coponet, as he speaks, he moans and virtual with pain and effort, the good cool, utterly anything coherent. Grow in, go in, cut. Ah. John sharply grogan. Who the hell is, who, who the hell is a grogan? Her coponet acting out of motion as he judges, groans and struggles to make himself understood. Go can, go can cut, go can cut. John getting it. He shot to throw no pilot. Man's misery. They cut your arms. Then they, when they go back, they hack them off again. Why hell would they do that? A cool pilot. He freshes and rivers. He slips into current panic again. Cause, because they are feeding me. Cut back to Shannon Corridor. The ghouls are following her. As he tries to get away, she's screaming at Ernest. Now they shuffle out. The dining area after her. The scene is a slow dark chaos of grunting zombie like people gnawing on the stuff. Looking like mean as Shanna yells energetically. Shanna, whoa! Stay back, stay back. She starts another group of ghoulish creatures slowly approaching from down the corridor, merged from the group from the dark room, fell like a good horror show victim. She hits at them. With a gun instead of shooting them. I don't want to hurt you. Why not? You know, dear. But they are clearly both dangerous and brainless of to of autotons. Mine reaches out of touch of bleeding wound she sustained during the landing of the pod. So you can taste the blood. Horrified, she plunges for the encroaching crowd of zombies and trips over one who's crawling around on the floor. At the back of the crowd, she scrambles away on her hands and knees, finds her strapped in a dead end. As the ghouls fix on her again, they start to come. She sees or thinks she sees somewhere them, the flashlight holding and something that looks like a quilter blade at the back of the crowd. There goes Clayton. Apparition seems to encourage her. She staggers to her feet and let funny uses a pulse gun for the purpose it was intended. You want lunch? How about her? She fires a mob of retarded predators and sends one flying backwards to rest. We seem to divert at least some of them. Mima Dago hears the sound of pulse, this pulse fire. And she ends screaming his name amid the rest of the call that wailing and groaning in the ship. He goes to move quickly towards it. As where the sound of battle is Shanna screaming his name reached John, who's left Grammar on Punnet. He's not certain of where she is. She's through the dark, muffled maze of the dying Nathaniel. Bellows her name back as he turns around in a circle, trying to get a, a fix on what direction she, to go in. For all your yelling, Shanna is doing all the right now. She's found a trigger at the pulse gun, created enough dead meat to last the other days of her own. A little while at least. She throws her head back and lets fly at one another. Nearing wall cries, before taking off down the mostly clear corridor. Codedega is struggling around through the corrupt and dark corridors of the Lithonian, fighting for breathing air, the putrid, claustrophobic atmosphere. San Siena's veils and pulse fire had stopped. Dega Shina turns uncertain now which way to go. Finds Korovarov standing there in a beam of flashlight, watching Dega hits his explosively alarm and Leaves this quilt to be his firing position. Who are you? Where are China? No worry. Karof off, makes a response, but to take a step towards him. But Diego, having none of anything in the head's tense place, and snarls, stay back. Stay back, or I swear I'll kill, I'll kill you. Penotrack, Vok. I don't think you, that's very polite. Man's voice suspect me prim and national. Diego struck for response. In a split second, Karof whips up his right arm. And the device he used to open the vapor bay, Don pointing the long corridor with Drago fires. A ball of white energy travels down the needle like cold and hits Drago square in the chest, 
instead of killing him like a vegetable ball of energy, it instantly forms a plasia like bubble round him, which renders him unable to move. Soon after, John is still jogging through the corridors, trying to take his shipmates, but he hears something and drawing his gun. He slides along in the shadow of the sea's current Oh, man seems pleased with himself and um, softly drives along the ruin moving to machine you find him. And what's behind him are the rivets John's a rivets John's protection. A pair of ships, zombie like inhabitants, a dragon egg's body behind them. John breaks cover and bellowing John no but before he can squeeze off a shot, another Kurovic slave jumps in from behind. He loses his gun while fighting the creature off some ways away. Shanna hears his, his hail and lead, heads in this direction. Pierre Crichton, as she makes the direction of John's yell, and double go attacks her. By now she is a server hurting them anymore and takes this one out with a blast of a pulse gun. And apparently roll without missing a beat. Meanwhile, John continues battling gauls and seed. Not unlike Shanna's recent experience, he jinxes her when he said the night lived dead. Earlier, they they come to him in ways with sink with slowness, snatching and grabbing him, they're lunging from the sides of the ring inexplorable, explorable, brainless, as if their numbers threatened to overwhelm him. Oh, she had a arise in the scene, pulse gun and starts laying down fire. Provok watches the rivals in the Indian and Crabbery, with a smile over his face. He again points the cover on his voice to Jago. His time it is acts a more conventional needle. He drops it deeper into the joint of his forehead. The goal attacking China, John, probably turn away his ancient to free cogras, his ancient call like the ego. China, John, who are in the middle of the car charge, suddenly find their own adversity gone and put, hit the pole of junk instead. They fall to the door. They quickly turn to see where the geeks went and they are just in time to witness a slack jawed horror, a dead quaid rock comes that does next. The device covered up that extracts voyage's fluid from Dagger's head, then raising Cordero to his own head, injects it to himself through the catheter, in which his, his uh, eye ear should be, a look on his face does not so, is it of intense accuracy. And then it's over, covered up, taking, having taken what he wanted, leaves Dagger's body to to be raving, to the uh, ravage, ravening ghouls to set upon the Augusto. Chen Rich is immediate. He fumbles over the pulse gun, charges the cannibals, screaming wildly. They scatter, knowing they have their meat later. Shanna continues to shoot and scream. John seems stunned for the moment before Sonny coming Shanna and grabbing her around the waist. They both fall to the knees by, Gen- by Dago's corpse. John behind Sienna, a proxy of a grief and loathing. Kadamoya summoned a space of bluish white light, where the tips of her tails forward to create a flowing treachery of energy streams of her body. The streams come together and knows a form of brilliant donut and a date by a normal space of star bus. Cut to command as Aaron gallops in Rigel and Stark already there. Aaron, pilot, what's going on? Rigel offering his own answer. Darbus without any warning. For your sake, Aaron, but we left right and the other stranded. Rigel standing, standing ill as he coughs a little. Vouched up all my second lunch. It's obvious no one cares what Rigel not watches up as long as they don't have to look at it. See, just so shortly after the great ship exits Darbus. Aaron, it's better be something good, pilot. Pike cut briefly to him his den. Replies in a tone, asks the question, yeah. What's it, what, what if it's not? Maria responded to dress call. Let you can see for yourself the call. Back on command, Aaron. Rigel and Stark. Take a look at the main viewpoint. See, 
Aaron, Taran, sure enough, the son of Moria, fierce at by, seems dark and lifeless. Anne quickly hails his captain. Where's the come in? It's Aaron, crisis. Most part, pilot, there's no answer from crisis. Pilot is standing somewhere between concern and dubious apprehension, sign of reappearance. Moya's potentially is privilege. Nor is Moya getting any answer from Talon. Aaron and Stark with strange and worried look. Cut to soon after as the transport pod leaves Moya, arcs towards Talon. Then cut to Aaron after he's boarded the young ship. Of Evans drawn, the only sound is static from unattained attended control consoles. He pauses just outside the partly partially open door. His command loose cables hang loopily, seemingly seems to be scorched marks material walls. Aaron mumbling softly to him response his ship. What happened to you? Stark. Breathing via cold. Aaron, what can you see? Aaron has been hit hard. Virgil cut to him in Stark and Moyer's command. As he asked warily, Pilot, any other ships in the area? Pilot cut briefly to him in a den. These peaks were not what I can tell. Back to Taran. Aaron cautiously peers into command. Aaron, crisis, and she pushes the command doors open. The door is a shambles of mid libraries, but the body lying on the floor. Crisis, she hurries to his side, his own sponsor, back, cut back to the good ship, Rajoon. The China and John are cut, trying to get David Batty back to the pod before it goes, comes lunch to local critters. John is as quite rage. He struggles to drag the slaves heavy corpse long to the sling, read with a blink. Blanket, Jen is in shock as she walks alongside, on David's bed head, Anne, and babbling. Jaina, we have we have to give him a death rights. John straining with his friend's weight. Yeah. Jaina, we have to give him a proper John Twisty talking over as she wrestles. There you go along. I'm sure there's a bunch of Oregons around here. Damn it, I wanna step I wanna stick together. I want us to stick together, but he Jenna protesting weakly rants. No, no. John, both of us. Jenna, it's not my fault. John, we are but not too damn. We are were too damn stubborn. He lets loose of the ego. I thought back to face Jenna. We seem to fo- not focus and confront her. A situation which includes that, in fact, they both they bo- are lost. Jenna, the ego's dead. Jaws and God knows where. We've been, we have to be, we have been here before. And a moment, he sees movement in the dark corridor ahead of him. Shannon mumbling. No, we haven't. Whoa, John grabs her and pushes her out of sight against the wall. Fuzzes his gaze and sees what he sees. Covers ship runners. It's where he's been slightly tearing the walls with teeth and nails. He says, Julie, dully. I'm eating the ship. John is his jaw is tight and furry. It's a fine inch like mine. It's a lie. And that he grabs China's pulse gun. Steps out the corridor where he really mows down. The fernie eaters. They make monkey like shrieks, they die. Shannon, meanwhile, that John hold her up, slides limply to the floor. Unable to cope with the twisted horror, his place, John finishes and yanks Shannon to her feet. Shannon babbling with panic. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. John, yes, we do. Indeed, for several more of the, of the, more of the ships did, did, did integrate the crew. Appear in a moment the corridor behind them, the distant but relentless in their pursuit of flesh, of fairly flesh, meat. Jan and John grab Diego's body and drag it off with their renewed haste. Cut back to Jewel in the dark hangar bay. He's standing outside a broken down pod with pulse gun, trying to steal himself to go looking for help. The sounds of deep, distant moaning echoes in blue grow blue. She's rightfully creeped out. She tries to encourage herself. Jewel taking a deep breath. Okay, I can do this. I can, I can do anything. That's what my father told me. That's what my mother told me. I never doubted them before. He stares and screams peremptorily, a moan and seems to be too close by. There's nothing there, just a tricky artistic acoustics, a great dark ship and her own skittiness. She continues the monologue with less much less confidence. I strain to see anything at once in the murk as she t- totters to onward. And maybe months or twice, but I shouldn't doubt them. I should believe in them. I should believe in myself. Last word is another sh- little shriek, a moaning, intelligible voices again, 
seem to waft about from nearby. A voice descends a tearful whimper. Oh, I don't think this is right. I shouldn't be here, civilized being. There's, there's got to be someone there who recognizes that. You just need to find them. She moves slowly towards the door. The others disappear through. Her feet are replaced a wide apart. Each leg requires a moment's coaxing. Requires a moment's coaxing to take a step, steep step forward, onwards. Coming to the door, she peeps faintly. Hello? There is no answer. Boogie groaning from afar. Great door leading to the rest of the fire inside me. So it was open, inviting her to the reckoning, speaking corruption. Beyond, this is all redhead needs. Moments later, she trotted back, step up, step. Up the step into the dead, but at least we're familiar, a well preserved transport pod. Cobat Shian and John, he's found the way back to Renu Hen's pilot's den. John Witt tries to wedge a great door to the chamber's shut. Shian stares at Rover Pilot, who sits rocking his ruined station, moaning softly, madly to himself. Shian whispering with horror and pity, Pilot is disarmed. John, huh? For that, he strides down the catwalk towards Rover Pilot. Great helpless creature sees him coming and begins instantly to panic. John is unfit, sympathetic, and terse from his demand. My pilot knew the wrong coils. Where are they? He stops impassively. If all this shaking never get, he can only grape and make choking sounds. John is angry. Out of patience, alone, alone, traps harshly. Yeah, I get it. I know, I get it. I come for, forward, would you scream? I come back, uh, pilot, I'm over. You're going to help me? You're going to give me something. I'm going to give it to me now. Roll and pun it. Again, speaking in pilot language. Taya, Taya, Kuku, Go, Tif, Haraya. John, cutting him off, him off. Talk to me slowly. Kind of pilot, panting, struggling to stay focused. This ship, our owner, that was. He sinks back in panic, his mother tongue takes over again. Kurtu ma putu. John Sonny. Go to Pert. Detention ship, prison ship, ship for the Kurushu. Betsy Pilot's great head nods. His voice trails off John. What the hell is that? Where the pilot just rocks his face. It's like any agony. But China knows. China, the criminal is insane. John looks at her and she peeps. Loud and fear and loathing as he sobs. I couldn't be saying we fix the transport pod. We'll get out of here. We got 3k wire. There's a, there's a start of lease. John's shouting with frustration, showing us to the nail. As he stands at the radio's destroyed console, he calls a ship, a whole ship, Janet. He's got the maintenance bay. He's got the doors. He's got the windows. He's got the smoke on the water. Janet, I don't know what you're talking about. John, the, the guy, whoever, whatever, the one killed. There you go, Dr. Spike. Did you cover a pilot? Cut it off. John whirls back at the door. Poor the fine pilot who regains his voice and eventually tormentor. tormentor. Cut off a spike. John cut it off. That's his name. What's his, that's his name? Try the pilot. Bring cut it off. Bring him back. Back. He's very, he's wary. Voice trails off again. John. What's the PK prison convoy? Doing way out here in uncharted territories. I got a pilot struggling to tell this with this. Tennis and Ronald's sad story. Beast cover Connolly. Ambush convoy as he speaks. China seems to take detach from Satan. And he, he, he kneels down by David's body in just the blanket they used to pull him the shroud out for him. Grand's ambush was drifting, but no to stand was not to go. Nowhere to go. Trails off sadly. China grasps her hands and took over. A holding small veil in, in them, raises her over her head while murmuring a prayer of the dead for the dead. When it slowly, went, slowly, softly, sadly finishes, no one helps, no one we starve. His hoarse voice fades to a whisper. John, cold even dead, rounding. What the, the big fuss? Why the red carpet treatment? Very pilot was shivered his voice. He looks up at John, his great amber eyes, his power. Johnny speaks, Jaina. This is a prayer and sparkles the contents of our over to ego's covered body. And the others, the other prisoners, what was their deal? Red Pilot shaking his head. He said softly, there are no other prisoners. John, he steps 
away from the poor road drew upon it, Jenna. She does not fall on these steps down for the new bangs upon its console. All towards the Shanna. Shanna, you never got to him now. You never get to him now. John never comes and kneels down next to her. Take his body, never, ever. With that, the liquid she sparkled on the lace shroud of combust. He watched the flames take hold, and then the two of them suddenly roll their friend's body off the cockpit walk in the abyss beyond Catacruz station. They watched it disappear into vast depth. John meets Shanna, and they send a mutually confident position in race. They rock slowly, echoing the movement of the scalable pilot of the crew. Somewhere by the ship, the damned Kovarok Fok stands with his device, remembering its controls. Everything else he seemed to be able to observe by a part of his visitors. Back in the den, Shanna and John finished their brief memorial, and now they both approached the very pilot again. Shanna? They have a, they have a prison, whole prison ship for one prisoner. John, the chamber's up in the console again. The face are upon it. Now what about all the other vermin we see? The hungry, hungry hippos, hippies. Erko, pilot, peacekeepers, John. Try to send for right peacekeepers. Well, pilot, they were peacekeepers, all of them. At the moment of dawn and today, and Dribbles part way open, the unroar of escaping air is heard. Shannon John yell, they sucked away from running the pipe console towards it. John slides as the halt against the door, manages to grab Shannon too before she can pull out as they're only crying with the bullets. Venting the chamber, Shannon and John manage to get out of the den to control the corridor. By the hands of Colovet, they are cornered. Colored off, I wish you wouldn't talk about me behind my back. John wastes no time making a lunch of a madman. A colour of strength belies his pasty appearance. He knocks a human flat with a casual blow. John makes a run, but Colonel Huff has her and pulls her towards him. Before he can do whatever he plans to go through, John back up and comes at it for him again. Cut blows his grip on Shanna. But again, John takes John out with a single blow. This time he's not only down, but out. Colonel Huff returns to her attention. Jenna is sit together, frankly, over the debris, go floor on the shoulder, one door to another, crying for help, escape, seeking my escape. And finally begging Cuddle off for mercy. There's no escape, and certainly no mercy. Next is a seal and she's trapped. He turns the face of advancing nightmare man. So he stops several feet away from her, and aims his device. He fires an edge bolt, like the one he hit Dago with. And like Dago, Shanna is immediately engulfed. A great Persimiate like bubble. Now let a sack rise of floor. Kedavok watches. Serpent becomes briefly veiny. Even more reminiscent of Pinsina. Pinsina. It's really sunny. Shanna. Vague outline. Vim becomes amorous. And suddenly seems to split. Persimiate suddenly but disappears. Not one, but two. Shanna's identical down. So their clothing and wounds are disbodied under the floor. They both seem dazed and dishonored for a moment. Until they spot each other, they scream, frail. They both bellow as they try to scuttle. Crab like onto their hands and wheels away from each other. Panties that they are, this weird development. So is Kudavoff, just as pleased. He praises a pair of them. And then, of an taken, making choice, grabs a chain on the right, holds her to his, uh, onto her feet. The other chain scrambles away, but a twin. The clutch is cut off, for each is out pitilessly, the one arm crying for, the, to, uh, for help, and free Jenna makes a few hesitant step back. They're too late, cut off, takes a vicious cut of this vicious device, and buries it in the body of the captive Jenna. She quickly succumbs as he drains her, the fluid he craves, and free Jenna gollops away. Back to, to come back to town on command with Vigil. They join Aaron and Crisis. Aaron and Crisis seated position on the floor, but he's unresponsive. Virgil, with a grim snort. Oh no, ho. You're not taking him back to Moyen. Aaron, he's still alive, Virgil. 
Right, we can fix that. You guys to roll with this bitch hovercraft chair. And he yanks the nat- neutral transporter. They suck it in the back of Chase's neck. Tara immediately begins to shudder. And what what are you? Give, give me that transponder. The ship is shutting down. Give me it back. Adrian Jarian hangs on his tone and continues to shake honestly. Why do now? The sigh so hands it over. Why do that's what we were hoping for? Aaron placed the transponder in his socket and Shannon quickly stabilized Aaron annoyed as Rigel. Presumption look. We just have to leave out out with Moya. We just if we want want to have it out with Moya, you could go right ahead. Why do you listen, you bad bad, bad bitch bitch? Tell us supposed to but you mean it's bad it's all time what you the Vogo pilot ship fighter ship. And someone somehow beat the yaws out of him and they'll come back to finish him off. We're here with him, an arm. The guy bases the same pretty solid president, president actually. Aaron, so we could keep him alive. We might find what we, what uh, what happened. But you another arm or two, it won't matter. Let go. Sure, we well we can. Me and my back of Roger. John rejoins, conscious of floor outside Raju. Raju's pilot then. And no Shiano Kulovac in sight. Picks himself up, begins calling for him as he makes his way, maze of claustrophobic passageways. John Shiano, Shiano, Shiano. With no response, he cries, which don't carry far. Solid decaying, a place but a flashing light. The sound of jibbing crew catches his attention. And jogging towards it, he writes, plays. This time he catches sight of several goodies former PK dragging a body across the floor of a room. Trying to let go go, charging in, in, and after them, they disappear through a wall door with sealed behind them. He throws his own uselessly, repeating about against repeatedly gets it pounding it wildly. He shouts of dead scent and then the into helpless cut screams. Jana Meanwhile, cut Jana, the only one who survived. She's complete frenzy. She's created her corridors. Dead corridors. Then the dead raid PK crew flees before this wild eyed vision. They can't outrun reality or own reality. Finally gets, comes to rest behind a container where she huddles and briefly takes her, get, tries to get ahead of and what has happened to her. China's shivering and confused. She talks to herself. Words one slutty from one, a trend of my brain. Okay, okay, come on, come on, okay. Two, China, as well as a hard and fight, stand panic. Two, she, she, me, we, I'm me. She was just the clone, the clone, so I'm with me, I'm with me. I was China and find herself as shift scenes to John. Shift to John. He found his way back to the Venture River with Pilot, standing on the catwalk, looking out over the abyss. And the pilot watches him silently as he talks. John, there he goes dead. China's dead. The other pilot blinks and puffs a little weary. The t- new two legged lunatic comes to the him, and God knows what worse way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can feel it. So can the other pilot stares at him, mouth open, hanging open, without a clue to what these counterfeit Moya has, well, has to put up with all the time. The John works into one of his cool phone home, home by his states of railed up on upperness. That hammer, hammer, that sick hammer, horror shine of a bitch. He's going to make me suck in my brains for a slippy chore. He ain't making me feel comfortable. And the pipe's panting and plucking fearfully. His console with many arm. He stares at frankly at John. Now see, I heard. Head for the transport pod. He runs me down like a sick mess of all. John heads for the console. We may take, we can take control. We're a pilot. We knew this was coming rather slowly. No. John, we want the patch. Oh, your ass back in. But the pilot said he said is that no arse patching. This one no. John relentless, we went to the chambers. Why do pilot the pilot, pilot pilot the poor fellow does not realise he has no choice in the matter, no. John and stuck his his arse out in space. The pilot shaking his head so violently and couldn't let always oh, hear he'd left on his brain sushing round his, his skull. No, no, no. John pilot pilot, you listen to me. Pilot, no. John, we can do this. We can find Jewel. We can take back control. The pilot gripes. Slack Jordan, this creature and quiets down. He seems in her eyes that the least completely befuddled. But John's campaign speech, 
I, you and I, me, buddy. Good things are going to happen. Good things. Cut to the corner shop, right striding down the corridor. You've had a freedom of a master with domain at ease. Approaches a cell, furnished snarling, hissing his head. No stops and solicitly addresses the court. Sales occupant. Codec, are you comfortable in here? The only response is some snarls. Crouch sits outside the door, closed behind him. He stays in a mildly approachable tone. Oh, do settle. You have been you're being very angry. So is Charles, occupied by Dagger, is standing with chains passing through his rings, collarbones, and attached to the ceiling, vicious as now is outstanding. There's as much as much fear as anger in his eyes. He wants Kellogg off, go off. Oh, Kelly Dagger, what have you done to me? Kellogg, Dagger, I saved you from very politely confidential, conf- confidential, conversational. You know, you're completely uncivilized. Dago, what you have done with Shanna? Have it off, Shanna? Dago, and the, the numerary. Cut off that gay girl? Yes, very, very, very nice. Dago grounds, really very nice. What, where are you, what, where are you close? Are you close, Dago? What have you done with her? Cut off, cut off, or evoke. I haven't done anything. The last I heard she was having, having her best bits eaten by cook, Zagari. Now he goes more angry and scared. He lunges at the coat off. Of course, he can't move any more than an inch or two. So he doesn't even let them flinch. As I said that they're uncivilized. It's you I'm more concerned about. So you go back to fear again. What have you done with me? I saw So on. Cut off. Yes, I saw. What do you see? You have his wide, wider. Wide. Another Dago. Dago? In a very low tone of pure disgust, you climb me. Cut off proud of his skills of wanting and properly understood. Said, Not the word clone, please. I troubled you. I twinned you. The old egg is equal and original. Tasty. I've never twinned a lapsin of a bubble. Dago won me. Cut it off, please. We're going to make rabies. Turns and leaves the Diego perhaps at me. Watches him go. Cut to Johnny Roperine and many panic. She's in a stock room earlier. Blasted over by Dago. Rooting through containers of bits and pieces, spare the funny parts, taking to herself badly. Oh, all as well. Shanna, January 2, in her haste, she backs away from the box, but she's found nothing stumbles, sitting down so abruptly. She rolls into her back, she checks out a wound herself, making sure it's still there and she's still running. Still herself, too, to me, too, fault. She scrambles to her feet and starts rummaging for the rubber crate. He covers you, that's what he does. Finds out he's looking for a box and spots another one. Another Joe sensor, the one Dago was discarded earlier, laying nearby, she pounces on it and giggles manically as she compared the two identical gadgets. Two chanas, she taps her head with one as she struggles to add com- cognizant to the list personal resources. Kiss, kick and cry, think, think. Cut back to the den of the Roger pilot with John. It's on platform beneath the pilot station. Patching door where the pilot asks in. Human at least is happy now that he's away plan. John shouting on his gay daily up to your best your best friend. He rips who's like pilot. The thing is from one place, plugs into another place. Cut up, you found a way to patch yourself into oh, oh, oh. the pilot squirming. There's someone having the choices done in his private parts in the false control system. It's security for the Peacekeepers, John, yeah, but he's still alive. We're a pilot, pilot, not, not conscious life, totally life support. John makes a connection that calls the sorrow of disabled pilot to roll with pain. John, Jim Christian asks louder. Natalie, you feel that? 
pilot swinging his head back and forth out of his console, seeing for the first time in a while. I was crying that it can't work the console. Jonah coming up, and that, with that, him and his two extra arms mount a ladder return to the Kuru pilot side. Cut back to egg and hisses his credit off. It suddenly appears at the door with his tail cut off. Brightly, I can double you again and again. Again, look at the peacekeepers. But there you go, the peacekeepers. What peacekeepers? Cut off, he speaks a sound of something whimpering and moaning, shaking his leash can be heard. Just one sight of the side of the door. As that was died by the side of the door. All over the ship, there's a Ferrari. The economy chuckles a little. Bojo at once had a team that were them. Bizarre. You can see, once there have been twins 30, 40 times. Not much good for conversation. Not that you especially witty right now. He snaps impatiently, he doesn't see whimper. Stay so, out still, there you go, the curl off. Open the cell door. I can't help you get off this. I can help you get off this. Cut off, he pulls his staring at Diego, generally mythified. Before coming to the cell, why should I want to do that? Diego, because this ship is dying, flooding pieces all around you. Cut it off, this is my home. I need all I need is more. What, food? Family? Is there, is there a difference? Smile for a moment, you deflect the question for continuing earnestly of any man there. We're binding lots of the twinning experience. There you go. You know how painful it is. I'm willing to spare you the pain of another half cycle as long as you breathe with me for me. There you go, breathing in deeply, but understanding revulsion. Breathe with what? Kind of takes look goes back to the door. It attaches the end of the leash from where he's hooked at the door. <clears throat> Cut it off. There you go, meet Belemia. With that, he leaves a screwing woman on all fours in the cell. She has a mop of blonde hair, dirty face, actually, a dirty everything. We meet not but anything, but we need but not flog the dead horse here. Back circles round her eyes and completely developed fold. Then a mistake. He shakes her head furiously as her collar makes noises like an errand ball. Chihuahua, a juvenile monkey. I'm sorry, I think I twinned her a little too often. They go eyes revolting, a piece of breed stock. Disgust as she looks at him. We're winning heat. At that moment, before anything else could be said, the sound of women's long dormant scissors crying up rumble through the room. Light begin to flicker as Kodorov. Kodorov looks around with real concern, quickly clicks Vienna's chain. They go before hastily leaving them to it. But in the hips of excitement as he goes, cut back to the one iron pilot of the room, the John behind the console with him. Where the pilot where there's no power, no, no power enough. Takes Takes time to charge. John still nothing. Rory Pollock, sound of power, scaling back down is heard. No, no, can't even light, even lights, no use. John encouraging him to break step on it. Pollock, you don't give up here. You're all I've got. You understand that? I need you, big boy. You need me. Come on, and for that, he goes back down the ladder with low platform, pilot station. Looks around for another collection that might help. Central Fabulous Cable. Central Cable, Fabulous Cable. As he hunts for that, what he wants to, wants, up above Grandma Pilot, watches the great old door of his chamber swivel open. Before his eyes, he peers over the top of his rotting station. Grandma Pilot screams with terror, not great, turn! John get, look, go, looks up sharply and drops what he's doing, gets back to the doomed pilot. No! The scream for a pilot's cut, really cut off by a sickening wet crunch. As John emerges outside, he feigns a lonely pilot, quiet and at peace. At last, his great head is bowed with his car. Carapace protrudes a heavy harpoon. John just stares at sight of the pilot, whose first words for him were plea of death, and whose last was the name of John Crichton. Cut the mind while Aaron prepares to leave. Aaron is quite simple, Rigel. I am taking them apart and I'm collecting the others. Rigel, pick pretty a food for you. There'll be nothing here when you return. And I'll be back with an arm. By duly leaving us chained to town, calling it the heck free. Aaron telling him is the only way to cover a through his prophecy. Aaron's gotten her way. Bowl of the bowl of your yorks. You should be starbursting, Aaron. We can't starburst. You know we can't. I do can. Aaron, she takes a step forward towards him and says in a low, threatening tone, You try anything when I'm gone, whatever you have in 
the pace of my box. Wherever they are, they'll be gone. When I get back, he turns and faces calmly. Come on, and Rigel start watch her go. Rigel, she'll give, we'll give her 30 random maker crops. When we can cut ourselves free, Tanner, Miss Starbust, Tanner, Tanner, but Tanner will cover. Places will not. Rigel eyes him with concern and respect. Now is not the right time, moment to have gone. Meanwhile, back to Rive, Dell still sits in transport pod, sits in dark hangar bay, terrified, alive and unmolested. She shivers and listens to weird shrieks and cries, pruning in from elsewhere, not finding. Cut to Glenn, a Diego pilot, with John standing in front of the dead pilot navigator, tries to work with counsel himself. However, he murdered the own pilot, killer of Vok, would have no reason to imagine anything else could be, could be close enough to a vain pilot to know actually. No, actually, no, some control sequences. John muttered to himself, Come on, damn it, John. Remember the sequence. You know the sequence. Remember the damn sequence. You know what you're doing here. Come on. As it works, as he works, he begins to get obsessed and some of the worried lights. He says, We're going to flip it back on. Somewhere bombed. Colonel Vok Vok is startled by his development. A grim smile, he readily is a thick, really needle like cudgel with his hand in dandy. Twinning, blood sucking, the vending controlling device. Nearby, Shana hides the power by it. Here's a pill, build, build up room and starts to sprint down the corner. They quickly ducks to get one side, conceals itself a curl off. Some of the old crew will try past deadly purpose. Cut by the royal pilot then with John, set in place with what he can. He gently touches the end of the harpoon, judging with a gentle pilot's head as he throws down the gauntlet. John calling in the, the air. Hey, Kalanoff, just you and me now. He touches the one last control pilot console. we climb up onto it. Prepares to be an eventable visit by the master of the ship. Sounds a real room. Powering up, continue to build. What do you say? We meet for some coffee or something. I'm sure we've got lots of stuff we could talk about. Stand by the remains of pilot station. Continues to talk the unseen tormentor. With enough match of swagger, fuel as nest car rally. They had cooked you up something special, man, K man. Gonna make a little uh, take a little while. Gonna hit you with some Starbus Supreme. Cut to Janus carefully. Siding along around those corridors. Some lights are back on now. They shine from odd angles and routine rolls. And other lights throb and flat fire. She tries to avoid detection by Rue's ghoulish crew. So only she hears a twinkle chains and a feeling rasping sound. She quickly trots towards it and stops scraping in front of self containing Diego Bella Bella. She had Diego? It takes a scene a moment. Diego both monkey. Selling in Bella. Chained together. Bella has attached herself to him. She's he's making and he's making whoopee with tankers. Diego moaning despite himself. Brain is Tico tart nibbles at his own roster zones. Ah case such Shanna telling him and will be mother to his child and Ah, uh, help me, Jenna watches. This this screech Venema slides down his front to work on a fleshy tentacle, quite another sort. A day goes stands, they're gasping and quivering. And the uh, comfortable. But Anna saw everything something now. But Jenna saw something else as she came and now turns to it. It's a metal storage cabinet. She yanks the door open a bit snappishly, and she looks over to her shoulder, Dagon friend. And Jenna, it's a tone somewhere when he moves upset. You sure you are? Not to, you I'm not interrupting you something. No, Jenna, just hurry up. He yells loudly, bent to make her. Hits an especially soft but happy pot. He would rather not have been happy right now. Jenna, okay, pulls the post gun out of the girl cabinet. Because you know I could have just leave you there. If you want me want no if that's no trouble. There you go. First don't well each other. Each other as he tries to maintain some semblance of dignity, having it while hastening to assure her 
help with design right now. No, hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, Jack trying to make, takes her time. Returning back to the cabinet, she takes it from, from it, and she's really off what she's really after. She's finally recalled, have you seen it? Says the cabinet of Marion. Right now, turning back on it to him. Marion coils. There goes no comment, though. She's quivering and hard to tell. It's, uh, it's him about Belvamina, busy below the belt. Has she helping now? I'm coming. She reaches back to the cabinet. Once more, and it's very quiet. Moves to Dago's quinta. Okay, she hoists the heavy weapon up and fires above Dago's blazing set of those chains and some rings. Heads drop to his side and Benjamin and jumps aside. Dago thinking, he's now dropped the grips of her but it towards Benjamin. The sunny looks pitiful, young. She gazes blankly back at Shanna. Ah, chains. Shanna, there's where I was aiming. She swings the kettle up some time and blasts of many chains inside, including the one tethering Beltimore. And to the vert, P.K. took briefly delighted by scrambling off, off on all floors. Cut to moments later, Shanna Dago made their way quickly for a dark corridor. Dago is frightened. Shanna, I don't know. We've got separated maintenance bay this way. He starts off down, left hand, bulk of the hall. Dago stopping and asking insistently, where did you get, did you get separated? Shanna, no, no, desperate to get out. Dago, we got the stuff we need, okay? We got the free key? We got now. Nah. They, 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 they look on Dago's face, tells her, it's no use, pilot, then. Come on this way. He makes the head off down the right hand hawk. But Dago fucks her. Dago, no, I search for him. You go back, they China remembrance. No way. I'm not going to spit up. Dago, China, go back to transport pod already. She looks up in his face and smithers, please, please. He talks, give me a quarter of an arm. I'll meet you there. He loops off, leaving her to make her way back to the pod alone. Cut by the regular rude pilot den. The sound of vegetating, very faint Starbucks. Energy building fills the great chamber. The steady hum, Johnny sitting next to the dead. Red pilot looking quite at home. Amid the noise and flashing right, the dead lights are curved up. Slips in the room, John Dowdy, showing off his own peculiar homely variety. The sanity. Get above what's, what, what's, what's that I hear? Is that? He hear, and cuts the hand of his ear. Darbus, cover up, Volk, like a, a good nutcase, unable to cover in anything beyond his own sanity. He eyes it to fifthly, we can't stop us. We, we're in a control corner. John, oh yes, we can stop us. It just means this whole ship is toast. Kalavov responds by ripping up his arm and firing a ball of any John who ducks behind a decaying console. I need to pop up in a different court spot. Shemak, light, show, buddy. You tr- want to try that again? Back to the corner of Mockley, bring it on. Cut back to transport pod. Drill is inside. The consipated to agree that parents would find shocking indeed. I decided the others are gone for good, and guessing that b- becoming one one thing seems like he's standing pulse gun ready, pressed against her big forehead, just between her eyes and screws up with courage. Joel sobbing with spare, okay. He said away, it's going to be quick, gonna hurt a whole lot less than being eaten. He pulls the trigger just as Jenna enters. Samma misses her own large head. Jenna Beck hits the deck as he at the bowl gun rockets. Like a bean and can of vines, pod, while journal screams, they both jaw in the shot fizzle well out. Shanna looks up wearily at the redhead and observes. Shanna, well, you still haven't learned how to use it. Joel's stopping her foot, and she screws up her face, begins to have a bell, traumatizing anew, and he shot himself with a pulse gun. At that moment, Roger's energy build up, caught by her kind of control collar, reaches of a collar, but hang a bang, falls the tremors. And calls the pod to shudder and rattle ominously. Shanna, what's the frown? She quickly rises, makes to prepare the pod for the hopefully very intimate rival, Dig and John. Cut back to Jane and the usual pilot. John, believing his friends are dead, continues his ride to death. The Colonel Roth, Doc. Colonel Roth could turn him more but properly alarmed now. The ship of them saw us, it's not strong enough. John, maybe she needs a tree charge. Colonel for lunch and John and dances away from. The top of the console protecting it from an attempt to interfere the Starburst sequencing. He said in motion. 
He claims to kick the colonel off his face. A lord of Kurari catches his foot and pushes it on into the thrown off balance and pulls back the under consul and the knees of a pilot who sits peacefully in his peacefully in his eternal sleep. Outside of space, the brownish, brilliant brownish light, light the star bus appears, food and plates of rose tails. But inside of its fanning over the body, where the brilliant light, bright, great yellow, what we are white balls, fireballs, begin to erupt along the sides. Back in Rigel Pilot's den, Zarari, begin to gather around like vultures to watch and wait for John. I could have fight, kind of up. The John pinned down on the console, and now climbed on to it himself. He stands over John and sheaves a long, sharp cartridge device. We drive towards John's face, but John is on his back and grabs into the vice. Both hands push back, push back the thick needle quivers only inches from inform his mouth. John grunting through clenched teeth. I don't think so, brain sucker. I arrange, I arrange my own death. Cut back transport with Gianna. As he tries to place the burnt out parts, scavenged ones a jewel, keeps a sense of terror for your watch, and the pod is rocked by good rooms. Do the end of his self destruction. Joel, hurry up, Trainer. Shannon, I'll go in as fast as I can. Joel, hurry. Jago continues to track the room, pilot, then, with shuddering corners. He obviously wear so in catastrophic he's cooking, but it's John's name. Meanwhile, back at the door, pilot, then, the degraded crew. Circling Colonel Vox, Candunia, with inches from his face, the death of all the sonry in the minute. John distracts himself by indulging the crusty again. John, what the hell are you still are you doing here, Kalavi? Cut off, flaunting the sunny part of his criminality. Hours will come, more and more you will come. To me, my family and farmland, my perfect dish, my perfect dish. Uh, John briefly ponders the fact, not talking to this guy. There you go. <coughs> Appears to be lost. He's standing in a beautiful corridor near the bend and roaring. There you go. Corey turn. Back to Consul John. He's Jello. There you go. Bello and Ross as he trains to hold back. Curse Daddy of Device. John Diego. The sound of the voice of his friend. He knows to be dead. Seems inspiring. Last peak of his powerful curiosity. He drives Curtis' arm back and rolls off the console, leaving the same man to fall forward, driving the business end of his dirty vice up. He's helped the console as Kedilov struggles to pull it out. John shouts to the waiting crew, we'll call you. Hey kids, it's dinner time. Kedilov's curtain and Kevagari farts the base of the console, where they crouch and hoot with excitement as they build up their courage to charge him. Kedilov's device tied to his arm, However, not firmly stuck into one of the pilot console, but it appears that absorbing the Lafayette's energy build as well, which is more than it's ever tended to uptake, begins to swell and grow. Code Crossy goes on the box arm, faintly tries to sedicate it. John minces, names his words, he speaks of retarded former PKs, and its finger looking good. The animalistic crew begin to close in on the cradle box. We fight some off without free arm in as John turns to flee, but cut off the device begins to discharge. He backed up energy now. First cut of himself is engulfed in one of these hideous protein like twinning sacks. And while the device continues to backfire, but unorganic looking umbilical umbilical erupts from it, swollen with spears of twinning sacks, driven to walls, cracked by menace of Kodobok. He seems to reach out after John like some kind of a snake. Before he can get through the door, the den, John is engulfed outside. Cut off the door bus. Continues in disruptive path. Long, a, long a body. And finally reaches the control collar. He collects a massive donut of red, noise energy. Explodes around the head. And sends a massive shot wave into space. Cut the moments later, Jack inside the self-destructing new fire. There you go. Continues to roar as John. But John overs the sounds of breaking up ship. They go, John, John, how can you hear me? John is sunny out of the field, field darkness. Ahead of him, John appears running. John, there you go. He pulls for a moment. There's a word that has really explode around them. 
that, and that, for that moment, as the well that was well called blows around them. And they look at each other. There you go. That are you K John? Yeah. We talk about it later. Come on, they take off on a run. Cut to the hanging bay. Joel is standing on the floor, several yards away from the pod, watching them till the last put off a moment second. They're there, they're coming out like ghosts out of blue and blue. John, you're alive. Jill, the reunion will, will have to wait. Jill is barely jumping her skin and eager to leave. Come on, hurry up, Shanna, let's go. John, Shanna, you should stay on the surprise of lead that she heads with pod steps. But they go to Jill, so it's fine. But at that moment, another voice calls out. His owner squeezes through the door, closing him by the die doors. John, hold it too, hold the door. You come again, it's in, and Jago and Jewel look to the back, look at him. Jewel looks shocked, Jago looks pained. John, too, looks glad to be home. Jewel, you're alive. That moment, he and the other John, on top of the pod steps, make eye contact. Against each other for a moment, it's may wonder and apprehension. <clears throat> but there's no time to think. The moments later, the transport pod is a mercy fixes. Arcs away with doom ship the Royal Crew Room. Explosion of Starburst Energy in a control collar. Effectively destroyed the collar. Decabinated her. A pod sparks the safety. Freaks the safety. Raven and Ben struggling as her head and tail separate rugged, raggedly and drift free of another, each other. Cut to the pod. Shadows of flight controls. Diego sits in the co pilot's seat. A ride is very rough. Shannon muttering in the pod. They all try to gnaw to Rod Johns. Come on, you piece of junk. I say, Shin, Johns are having a hard time in Norway. One sits off the other to the side. Here's the other John fixed with an annoying blinking stare. His pensive, baneful, and disbelieving to his new hell. I stand near David's shoulder. He looks at the other John, worried and concerned, stunned. He looks at Diego and glances at him before a stood as he was turning his eyes front and centre. Avoid further on contact. The John standing next to him returns, worried gaze between, but looks away for a moment. Two Johns acting out between a pair of them. All one man's man's emotions are finding themselves squared. Fire passed, and the way home to a good boyer is found. She and Tanner move slowly to walk through space by side. By side. They link by an, an uncompicuous, which delivers some same power. And nutrients to the young ship while he recuperates from the nightmare of a f- whatever fight he got into this time. Cut to later, Myers Vidal Lab. Joy could there go stand, stand on the side of Zam table, where Shannon is lying, having her wounds attended. Dago speaking stark, the tone that's after the yet eager tell what happened. In another world, another in the flesh, no more than that, a foot for my crop. I saw it, I saw myself, another me. Chuck, do you remember the actual moment? Dago, I don't remember anything you said, but it was a corpse. Shannon, a tone that speaks, says that she's not trying to convince herself of it. It was a copy, just a copy fake. Dago, morbidly fascinated. I keep telling myself that, but it's quite in Kronoff. He said he created two equals original. Shannon, bold user. Kronoff was full of it. Dago, but how, how do you know? I'm not a copy. Maybe the real Dago's dead. Jenna, not just frightened by the whole dear idea, clearly whispering, wishing to shut up, because you just know. You know, she turns her head away and whispers herself, frown. But then, meanwhile, two Johns sit on either side of the table in silence, not facing each other, and as they ponder for real, question of identity, of course, Jenna, there goes rhetorical by comparison. The playing rock, paper, scissors, a game, etc., actually, should give each other an equal chance of winning, losing, and trying. But again, 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 they make identical mood throws, never missing tie after tie after tie after tie. No words are spoken, no eye contact made. They both stop the game at the same moment, and what each really runs his thumb across the bracer of his uh, right eye, like a mirrored reflection. Each gate slides its thumb down each cheek. I take them, taps his lower lip, and the game is slightly resumed. Tie, tie, tie. I just sits watching them from the other doorway. The room they sit. A wearily unwindable strain grinds on and appears and next stands next to Rigel. Aaron, uncertainly. Who is he? Rigel, who is sighs still tied. And the two times play on for a tie after tie of tie. Sometimes it's still is simultaneously side long glance, shiver, as they try to find something that might distinguish one 
and then went from the other. Avaisa Kolovov repeating when he said to Dago, echoes in mind, a double do between two, equal and original, the end.